Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yep, I'm actually going to do part two of the kerosene heater using diesel in it because I read on the internet and through YouTube videos that you could actually use diesel inside of a kerosene heater, but you had to add something to it. You could add the diesel conditioner or you could add alcohol. <clears throat> so, it's cheaper to buy diesel than it is to buy kerosene. So I figured why not save myself a few bucks because locally, Kerosene is about six dollars a gallon here. And if you travel out about 15 minutes, it's $3.99 a gallon, which isn't bad. But diesel is only about $2.67 out here a gallon. So do the math. Especially when you're buying 10 gallons at a time, you save yourself a little bit of money. So what I found out was that if you add alcohol for five gallons, somebody put it in the comment if I'm wrong. I just looked around a little bit on YouTube. I added about I think three or four ounces per five gallons. And that kind of stops the wick. They call it clogging up, but it kind of does. It crystallizes. What it does, it gets it all brown or you know black and crunchy and all that. That's what it likes to do. So I figured I'll try it, save myself a few bucks, and then see what happens. Well, come to find out that I did it in this kerosene here right here, the little guy right here, because the shop that I have is not that big. You know, it's. Just enough for me to do my woodworking. Anybody who follows me even early on, I do a lot of woodworking. But I'm also a car guy, so I do a lot of car stuff also. But I figured, why don't I do a tutorial on, you know, how to hot, you know, heat your shop or your garage for pennies. Well, I figured, why not? Everybody says it works out. You can use diesel, add the conditioner or the alcohol. Then it works out. Well, I did it. Not really impressed with it. A lot of people say, oh, it doesn't smell. Trust me, it stinks. I did it. I didn't get, like, any smoke. In the very beginning, I did because it was a brand new wick that they given. But with the diesel, I mean, it smelled bad. You know, I mean, the fumes of it, you can kind of tolerate it. But in my shop here, there's a lot of air coming in, so not too worried about it. It would air out. But the thing is, is when you're done working for a few hours... I mean, your clothes and your body, you just smell like burned diesel fuel, like you've been sitting next to a semi for a couple of hours. So, doing that, the wick didn't burn evenly all the way around. That I found out also. I even put in a brand new wick because I had to change the other one. So I put in a brand new wick. I did my ratio of like four ounces per, of like four and a half gallons I had exactly. Mixed it up. It's supposed to stop it from it. You know, hurt, you know, clogging up the wick. It didn't do that. You know, it just, it smelled bad. It burned. I mean, even when, you know, you look at the top of it right here. This should be glowing red all the way around. The whole thing. Let me move this in closer. So right here, I mean, it was only lit up really from here over. And the wick didn't really, let me get this out of here. I mean, I had to turn it up higher and higher just to get, you know, the flame to be remotely high. So let me take these little things off here really quick. I already got them loosened. There's only three of them that hold the cover on. There ain't an exit to hold a heck of a lot holding these things together. And off it comes. Now, all there really is after this is these little wing nuts. I only loosen these up a little bit. Get them loose. There's three of them. You don't need to take them completely off. Okay, there are these little guys right here that hold them down. But you do have to take off there these two right here. And I know there's one on the other side. They're smaller than the ones that hold the cover on. So you're not going to get confused when you go to put them back on. Just these three are small that hold it on. This cover lifts right out. I still had the electrical attached to it if I want to do the battery ignition. 
which I never use. It just, it takes a 2D size battery. It takes a lot of energy to get that hot. So I just lift it up a little bit. Use one of those clickers you light your barbecue with. And that's it. And these just slide out. It's actually still a little moist. And this is a brand new wick. Okay. So then to get these things out, they're kind of a kind of a pain. As you can see, it actually got it really, really hard. Let me check the camera to make sure you guys can see this. This is listen. That's hard. It like crystallized it. It's not supposed to do that. They say if you add the alcohol or the diesel fuel conditioner, you won't get that. But that hardening up right there did not allow the fuel to get sucked through the wick. So with that being said, this wick is pretty much garbage. I've already bought another one from Tractor Supply. It was only like six bucks, six, seven dollars, something like that. This thing's going in a container because this is going out for garbage. This is the wick I bought. I got this from Tractor Supply. They sell them for the larger ones too. They're not expensive. Like I said, it was like six, seven bucks. It's a replacement. I thought that when I replaced it, you know, when I put a new wick on there, I would be okay. And I wouldn't really have to worry too much about anything else. Do the fuel, you know, the, the little treatment or whatever. Get a little brush sometimes it helps to clean off the crap. Clean it off a little bit here. Because it's got all the, the carbon on it, all the bunch of stuff. Now this is a little bit of a pain. Because you, you can see it has these little, like, you can catch your finger on there, like little spikes. And what they do is they hold on to the wick. This part, I would fold it, you know, fold it in half like this. Fold it one more time. Because if you're going to try and open it up and get it in there, it's, it's not going to do it right away. And also make sure it's all the way down. And I think I bought the one that's actually too small for this. Nope. That's right. Because this has got to go over that. Yeah, I bought the wrong one. But I'm going to make this work. No, I didn't buy the wrong one. It's just this thing doesn't like to stay on here. Because this should fit over. Yeah, I did. I actually bought the wrong one. But that's my own fault. Because I know this is not going to go over this. It's not going to stay on here. Nope, I grabbed one that's way too small. I didn't think they came that small. But anyways, yeah, that's my own fault. I took it for granted that I bought the right one. And I didn't. So I can always take it back. Wick number 123. So obviously don't do what I did. Bought the teeny tiny one. Because I took it for granted. Actually, when I looked at the... When I looked at it, now look. If you see this, it's for the smaller one. That's what this says. This... Should go to this but obviously it's not and this is the one i did buy it's a 112 so when i grabbed them they only had two different styles that is my own fault but what are you gonna do that you can do except for you to just take it back and buy another one but i do have one my original one i saved it don't ask me why I was thinking maybe I could get it to go again by taking all this and just, you know, breaking it all off of there. Why not? If I can save the wick, save myself a few bucks. I know you can trim these also, but I don't know how good that would work. But I'm going to try just for the heck of it. I'm going to try this old one. See if it works. Yeah, your hands are going to get dirty. Who cares? If you're a car guy, you're used to getting your hands dirty. No big deal. But this is actually the original one when I bought this. I bought it used off of somebody off a of marketplace. I paid like 30 bucks for it. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to put the wick farther down. 
It's got to go on even. That's the one tricky thing. These are a little bit of a pain to put on. But it is what it is. Make sure it's not up too high. Pull those little excesses off. And you got to kind of push it on to make sure. Get it back on there. On those little hooks. Because that's what kind of grabs it. Make sure these things are not in your way. And also, I forgot, before I forget, this little rubber thing needs to go back on here. Because that's what stops the fuel from spilling all over the place. So hopefully I can salvage this one. And the one I go on, got to keep bunching up on me. Yep, that's not going to want to go in easy. It's making it slide around on me too. But I'm sure you guys are probably going to yell at me, you should do it this way, you should do it that way. Everybody has their own opinions, I don't mind hearing them. But unfortunately, I learned from trial and error, and this is one of them. Just kind of make sure it's in those little hooks. And gotta make sure it doesn't bunch up. Pull on them a little bit. Make sure they're in there. And that is really that's not where I want it. But I know right now this is gonna be way too high and it's gonna start burning like crazy because as soon as I go to raise it up. Get this thing down really quick. See what it's gonna do. If I gotta adjust it. If I do, I do, I don't. Great. If you've never done one of these, you're gonna figure out really quick how high you have it. Okay. This thing did not want to move. All right, now I got it down in where it's supposed to be. Tighten these down. You can finger tighten them. Or if you want to, just take a pair of pliers and tighten them down. Get all the crap out of there. This little guy, ain't much holding it on. Tighten them up. No biggie. They do have a little slot in them. You can use a flathead screwdriver. But as long as you got them on there, really good. It shouldn't go anywhere. Chuck. I'm probably not going to get on there right either. Ah, come on. Yep. Thank you. Make it work. them down all the way because you're going to want to move this thing around. You're going to want to wiggle it. to tighten down really good don't tighten them real hard with like a pair of pliers like I said it's got a slot in there you can use like a screwdriver if you use a pair of pliers just snug them you'll be okay 
I don't want them super loose for this thing you're moving it around and it comes apart because that could be bad. That's good. Before you put that, you gotta slide your They're really good. Now, let me get myself a little bit of kerosene real quick. Get it going. And we should be good to go. It's ready. Everyone probably wonder where I went to. I just walked away from the camera really quick. I know I should have did this before. But I didn't think I had. Just don't do this while it's lit. I know some guys like to do that. That's dangerous. Please don't do this. And this will kind of hold it in place. Well, it's low. And that wick should start absorbing it pretty quick. So basically, I'm not going to put the um, diesel fuel back in it. I'm not going to use the conditioner because I'm not taking the chance. I'm not going to keep buying wick after wick and wasting money. Because the other wick was a little bit more expensive. There we go. Some fuel in it. About half full. I like these because they burn slow. And the heat, a lot of it comes out from the front and then comes out from the top. But with that, These burn slower. They put out less BTUs, yes. The fastest way to light these. Turn it up just a little bit. Just enough to get it going. I don't know if that wick's going to be damp enough yet. Yeah, it's going. Do that really quick. Put this on there. Leave it alone. Let it get warm. And you'll see it start to glow. Get it to where you need it. And that should be it. So, from my experiences, I'm not going to use the diesel fuel anymore. I'm not going to have go out and buy a bottle for $10 for the conditioner and do another experiment with it. Just not going to do it. I wasn't happy with the results using the diesel fuel with the alcohol. It didn't work out good. A lot of guys say it did. But I've seen some guys who have done this also and said, well, it didn't work out. Took it for granted thinking that, okay, you know, I found better reviews more than bad reviews. Well, my review on this one, I'm never going to use that the diesel fuel ever again. I'm just going to stick with the kerosene. If I get to make a 15-minute drive and get it for $3.99 a gallon, I know it's going to work. I won't have to change the wicks. I won't have to add alcohol, and then I won't worry about the fumes because the kerosene that I get, it doesn't have that dye in it. It's clear, and it doesn't smell. And I've noticed that when using that, but when I use the diesel fuel with the alcohol in that, a lot of guys say it didn't smell, Trust me, it smelled. I mean, when I would come out of my shop here from working, I would smell. I mean, I needed to take a shower because my clothes would, you know, smell like I was near, you know, a truck. And you got to take another shower and you just smell. Not a good experience. So I'm sticking with the kerosene. Anybody who has one of these, in my opinion, stick with your kerosene. Use what you know. I know it's nice to try and save a couple of bucks, but you know what? It's not worth your health. You know, breathing in all those fumes from diesel fuel like that, burning it. Trust me, it does smell. Everything in your shop will smell like it. Yourself, all the objects, everything. So I'm not going to do that. I have to air out my garage anyways. So I'm sticking with the kerosene. Sticking with the stuff that doesn't have the dye in it because it doesn't smell. Getting a good result. i got to spend a few more bucks. Rather do that than choking on the fume than 
smelling like I've been near a semi all day. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, share, like, and please subscribe. I'm trying to grow my YouTube family and I'd like you to be part of it. Till the next time, I will see you guys on the next one.